Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. Holy Spirit, come. Light, come. Truth, truth, come. Truth, truth, come. Light come. Light, come. Light, come. Light come, truth come, light come, truth come, light come, truth come, in Jesus' name, thank you, Jesus, thank you for your love, Jesus, thank you for your joy, Jesus, thank you for your peace, Jesus, in our lives. Thank you for Thank giving you for us giving peace, peace round about, about, Lord God. Thank you Thank for you destroying for the, yoke the yoke of darkness, darkness Father God, and bringing and light, light, Father God, God and, and truth, truth in each, each and every person's, person's life under, under the, the sound, sound of my voice that, that is watching, watching and people, people that, that will enter, enter into, into your, your house, house tonight, tonight, Father God. God. Light, light come. come. Truth come. come. You said in your word, Father God, that we are to always pray, Father God, and not faint, Lord. So help us to not faint, Father God, in our day of adversity, Father God. Help us to be real, genuine, and authentic in who we are, Father God. And as we continue to do that, Lord God, you will change us into your image, into your likeness, Father God. Thank you, Father Thank you, God, Father for God, giving God, us the victory God, in this season, this Lord God. Remove, Remove doubt, doubt, Lord God. Remove, Remove lack, lack, Lord God. Remove, Remove insufficiencies, Lord God. Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, have your way tonight and for the rest of our lives. Open up our ears, Lord, so that we may hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Hallelujah. Praise to Abba. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for illuminating light in our lives, for illuminating light in those rooms that we haven't opened, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus, for the truth Thank you that you are the truth. Thank you that you are the way. Thank you that you are the life. Thank you that we follow you, Father God. Thank you that we follow you, Father God. Thank you that you lead us, Lord God. Thank you that you are our shepherd, Lord God. Thank you for your rod, Lord God. Thank you for your staff, Lord. Thank you for your peace. That surpasses all our understanding, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that your ways are not our ways, Father God. Thank you that your thoughts are not our thoughts, Father God. Thank you, Jesus, for your blood, Lord. Thank you that we are blood covered, Father God. Thank you, Jesus, for that 360 degree protection, Lord God. 
and kept yeah. your angels around each and every person under the sound of my voice, Father God. Give them strength, Lord God. Give them power, Father God. Give them might, Lord God. Remove any worry, any doubt, Lord God. Remove the seeds that the enemy has planted that try to tell us we are not good enough for you. You can use anybody, Lord. You are not a respecter of persons, Father God. You are not a person, a God of status, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, that we are the least of them, Father God. And as we continue, Lord God, to remain small, you will make us great. You will make us big, Lord. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus, for tonight, Lord. Thank you, Lord God, that this is a night of freedom, Father God. Thank you, Jesus, that we are set free by your blood. That we have liberty in you, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Help us, God. Help us. Help us, Lord. Help us, Father God. Help us, Lord. Help us, God, to not be so prideful to ask for help, God. Help us to remove our ego, Lord God. Help us to not be prideful, Lord God, because pride comes before the fall. Help us, Lord, to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying, Lord. Thank you, Lord God, that we climatize this place in advance, Lord God, to be a source of healing, Father God, of wholeness, Father God, and to be fully cured, Father God. And when I say this place, I mean this temple, your temple, your body. Thank you, Jesus, for what you are doing right now, Father God. Thank you in advance, Father God, for the divine assignment. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that we be swift to hear, Father God, slow to speak, Lord. Thank you that your light illuminates on this hill, Lord, on 1603 Fortune Avenue, Father God, on 1517 Fortune Avenue, Lord. In Panama, Panama City, Florida, Florida, Father God. In St. Andrews, Lord God. In Callaway, and Parker, and Lynn Haven, Father God. In C.D. Grove, Lord God. In Bay, Bay County, County, Father God. In North Florida, in Florida, 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 in the United Florida. States, Lord, in the world. You are the light of the world, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that we are the salt of the earth. Help us to not lose our Savior, Father God. Don't allow us to be just a normal piece of grain, Father God. Help us to know our purpose, Lord. Help us to not be trotted over by men, Lord. Allow us to know, Father God, that we are worthy of you, Lord. We are worthy of you, Jesus. Your blood has cleansed us, Father God, has made us clean, Lord. Thank you for the new homes, Father God, that are on the way for your people, Father God. Thank you, Lord God, that our faith will push us into our destiny, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that we plant those seeds, Father God. And we water them, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you help us grow, Father God. That you remove any germs, any sickness, any disease, any viruses, Father God. Any voodoo, hoodoo, white magic, any spells, enchantments, Lord God. That has been placed over your people, Father God, unknowingly, Father God. We cancel it by your blood, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Help us, Father God, to have some energy. Because we are getting lazy on you, Lord. Help us to have that energy, Father God, that we need, Lord. 
so that we can fulfill our mission, Lord, on this earth, which is to lift up your name. And that's the only mission that we have here, Lord. Everything else, it doesn't matter. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you use us however which way you will, Father God. Thank you, Lord, that you control our minds, Father God. That you give us the mind of Christ, Father God. Thank you, Jesus, for your Holy Spirit, Lord. Comforting us, guiding us, Lord, to the light, Father God, to the truth, Father God. Help us, Lord God, to not be lazy to study your word, Father God. Your daily bread, Father God. Because, Lord, we cannot live on bread alone, Father God. We cannot be physically fit, but spiritually weak, Lord. Help us, Father God, to remain faithful in you. Because you are faithful, God. You are faithful, Lord. You are love, Father God. Help us to love like you, Lord. Help us to forgive like you, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us to check ourselves, Father God. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for comforting us, Lord God. For convicting us, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Help us to hear you, Lord. Help us to hear and do, Lord. Help us, God. Help us, Lord. Help this word to help us, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus, that you are with us always, Father God. In every situation, in every thought, Father God. In every breath, Lord God. You woke us up this morning, God. So why should we not thank you, Lord? How can we not thank you, Lord? Help us, God, to get uncomplacent, Father God. Because we are taking you for granted, Lord. You didn't have to wake us up this morning, God. You didn't have to give us your breath. You didn't have to give us your love. You didn't have to die for us, Father God. You didn't have to do anything, Lord, because you are the great I am. You are him. Thank you, Jesus, that you sacrificed yourself for us. And we spit on you, God. How can we say we love you, but turn around and say, excuse me? F you at the same time, God. Help us, God. Help us, God. To be real. To be authentic, God. To love you genuinely, Father God. Because we are being pretentious with you. How can we say we love you, but we don't keep your commandments? How can we say we love you, but we don't love our neighbor? How can we say we love you when we don't love ourselves, God? Help us, Father God. Help us, God, to be more like you, Jesus. To walk like you, God. To be on that narrow road, God, which leads to life. Because you are our light, Father God. You are the light. Illuminate those dark places in our lives, Father God, so that we may walk with you, Lord God. That we may talk with you, Lord God. That we may bring more souls to you, Father God, which is our whole mission here on earth, Father God. Thank you for even giving us the time, Father God, to continue to still gather more souls and go after more souls, Father God. Because we don't know the hour, Father God. We don't know the second. We don't know the minute, Father God. 
Because you can come back like that, God. When you are ready, God. Help us, God. Please, Lord. Help us to not be complacent. Help us to not be lazy, Father God. When we are in such a good place right now, God. We are in a water place, Father God. We are in a place where you take care of us, Father God. We, we shouldn't even have any worries, Father God. We worry about things that don't matter, Lord. Help us, Lord God, to be sons and daughters of you, Father God. Please, Lord, forgive us Lord, of all of our sins, all of our iniquities, all of our transgressions, God. Because you were nailed on the cross for us, Lord. You took those lashings for us, Jesus. Help us to be new creations in Christ Jesus. Because our mission here is to lift your name up, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Put your hands together all over the house and tell the Lord, thank you for truly God is worthy of our praise on this morning, on this evening, in this offering time in the sanctuary. So if you're online, if you would like to give um, through Cash App, is capital S, capital G, capital P, capital H, capital W, lowercase E, L, L. So, so it's a kind of glory powerhouse. Well, well it's the initial. So, so you can, you can give, give. So we, we ask, ask that you give, give through, through Cash App. And, and if you would like to give through Give a Vibe, it is Shekinah Glory Ministry, Panama City, Florida. You may make your time and your offering at, at this time. time. Amen. For God, God is a cheerful giver. In the name of Jesus, and we thank you. We thank you for the givers on tonight. We thank you, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, we just ask that you continue to bless the house. Continue to bless the house, oh God. Continue to increase, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh God. We thank you for these tithes. We thank you for these offerings. We thank you for the seeds, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh God. We thank, we thank you for the, for the opportunity, opportunity to bless, bless ourselves by blessing, blessing the house in the, in the name, name of Jesus, oh God. We, we thank you, Lord, Lord God, and we celebrate you on tonight, tonight, oh God, and we thank, thank you for the for word that's, that's going to come forth. We thank you for the opportunity that makes preaching and teaching easy, oh God. So we open up our ears, our spiritual ears, oh God, and we open up our heart to receive the word tonight through Pastor Billy Joe Davis Jr. As he come, I ask that you put your hands together and thank God for Pastor Davis. Hallelujah, Jesus. I'm back again to give announcement. Some of you should have received a text from me this evening, but for those of you who have not, on June the 30th, Sunday, June the 30th, with this, which is the fifth Sunday, we will be fellowshipping with Restored Church. And the address is 3726 Main Street, Condell, Florida, 32431. And the service is at 11 a.m. We will not have service here at Shekinah Glory Powerhouse. So we will be fellowshipping with our brothers and our sisters in Condell at Restored Church on June the 30th. Thank you. You may be seated. The word of the Lord is profound again once tonight. 
and God sends a word to his people, and it's an instructive word, and the title of that word is Check Your Well. Check Your Well. Life is full of concepts and ideas. And we as people, we move through life as we learn, we navigate. A lot of people come to church, but they don't put any authority in or upon the word of God. The Bible is very instructive when it tells us Ecclesiastes, I believe it is 10 and 10, I think, if the iron be blunt and you do not wet or sharpen the edge, then you have to use more strength. But wisdom is profitable to direct. There's a point of time and a season when we have to come to the knowledge that if we're going to expand the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, it has to be done through the agency of the church. Ecclesia, the called out ones, that God has said he believed that they have the ability to put the kingdom first and a mindset that they would be kingdom minded. God purposed the church for us to be able to be a place where evangelism finds its home. A place where worship and fellowship, they're just the norm. A, a place where people can see a biblical community, a service ministry, a, a discipleship of people who follow God. But how do these things happen if people don't understand that God has made all of us uniquely as individual whales and yet the house as a whale. And when we understand that a whale has no water, the purpose of that whale is limited until it can be filled again. We lose sight of what God is telling us because Wisdom and understanding tends to leave most people, but wisdom and understanding, they hinge themselves on your ability to be changed, your ability to be transformed, your ability to be made new. How did this happen? It happened by and through the Word of God. The Word of God must be deposited in your mind, then translated into words, actions, and deeds. God has a plan for you. And so when God wants us to do something, he wants us to know that we need wisdom, we need knowledge, we need understanding. But beyond that, we need comprehension. Comprehension. We need clarity. We need clarity and comprehension. When we have clarity and comprehension, then we don't struggle with understanding. We don't struggle with the employment of wisdom. Philip was over in Acts day, chapter, verses 30 and 31. And this speaks of the time with the Ethiopian eunuch. And it says that in verse 30 that Philip ran to him and Philip heard him reading what we would call the book of Isaiah. He poses a question to the eunuch, understandest thou what thou readest? Acts 8, 31, he says, how can I, except some man should guide me? And so he wanted Philip to come up and sit with him and guide him to the point of understanding. We, as a people of God, there will be a season when we may not understand what we read. But the Holy Spirit is a spirit of understanding. Matter of fact, Jesus was made of quick 
understanding. So when we seek understanding for the right reasons, God will bless us. Somebody say, check your well, check your well. You see the psalmist wrote Psalms 119 verse 144, the righteousness of thy testimony is everlasting. Give me understanding and I shall live. Solomon in the book of Proverbs writes over in Proverbs 24 verses 3 and 4, through wisdom is an house built and by understanding it is established. Wisdom builds the house but it won't be established my goodness until understanding come can, 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 oh, I'm, no, don't, don't do it Pastor David but, but you, ever, you ever seen a place and you go and you see the cornerstone and the cornerstone speaks of the establishment of that place the cornerstone speaks and the Bible tells us that Jesus Christ is the chief cornerstone and he is the one that lets us have wisdom to build, come on, upon the word of God and to understand it by the spirit of God. These things are not deep, but then he goes to Proverbs 24 and 4 and he says, knowledge fills the chambers with precious and pleasant riches. Knowledge, the more acquisition of knowledge with understanding and comprehension and clarity we can begin to bring things in that will show the goodness or the glory of God the goodness and the glory of God is not going to be seen in acquisitions of vehicles or houses it's not going to be seen in accumulation of money it's going to be seen in the transformation of you you see, you're the most valuable asset there is on earth. And until you can come to that understanding, you will miss God. But when you understand that God made you, man, come on now, man was able to be part of the conceptualization, but you were created by God. And when you understand that everything that God made was good, you don't struggle with questioning why and you don't let a house or a car or money or prestige or image define you no 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 you have to let the word of god which shows somebody know you for what you used to be and you do understand that when god called all of us to be wells and he did there are some people that know the type wells we used to be but after transformation, my goodness, after conversion, after salvation, the purpose of the well changed because wells were a sign of wealth. In biblical time, they were a sign of wealth. And ownership, come on now, the more wells are that you had, the richer you were. Imagine yourself as a well right now and God is looking at you and he's saying, are you my will? And if we were to drop to draw, what would we get? Check your will. Somebody say, check your will. You see, understanding leads because Paul right into the church at Hebrews, in Hebrews the fourth chapter, verses 2 and 3 he says for unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them everybody heard the gospel my goodness but the word preached did not profit them not being missed with faith in them that heard it he said for we verse 3 for we which have believed do enter into rest there is a resting place in God that lets you know, come on now, that you are supposed to rest in the confidence of who you are in God. And when you rest in the confidence of who you are in God, you don't mind 
becoming that person where Jesus says, Ek, come on, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. That, In other words, other people can live by the very thing that God is producing to come through you. Transformation has to come. It has to come. Minds are stagnated, and the reason that they are stagnated is they have not focused on what Jeremiah said in Jeremiah 2 and 13. He said, for my, the word of the Lord said, for my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living water, and hewed them out cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. If you have framed cistern in your mind and I'll help you to flow with me, just say container. He said these containers were broken and they were, the purpose was, of them was to be like a tank, a modern day word for us, that would hold liquids. But if it's come on broken, it's gonna leak. And I wonder how many of you, my goodness, did not allow God to heal you to mend you, to move you beyond your brokenness so that every time that it comes time to pour in, there is a leaking out. But he said, you know, they committed two evils. First, they forsook him, which meant that they didn't depend on him to resupply them. They went their own way of setting aside, my goodness, their supplemental supply. Hmm. Jude speaks to us in the book of Jude, verse 12. He says, there are clouds that are without water. Do you want to be a believer? That's a cloud without water. Ecclesiastes 11 and 3 says, the clouds, if it's full of rain, it empties itself upon the earth. So when a cloud looks like it's supposed to rain, by the divine nature of God, guess what it does? It rains. When God says through Jesus Christ, Ek, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water, what do you think he's looking for? He's looking for you to be a supply. In other words, he's going to send you somebody, my goodness, somebody who's coming out of a famine. And they have, a divine, they have a thirst, a divine thirst. And God is saying, I'm going to use you to supply them, to help them. But if you haven't checked your well, and if you haven't noticed that perhaps the enemy has clogged up your well through unbelief, through life itself, if you haven't noticed that when it's time for someone to draw from what God put on the inside of you, they will not be able to get life or life sustaining water because you are dry from life and the events of life. You have to understand that, that, that when it comes to whales and things of that nature, generally it's going to require a digging and if it doesn't require a digging it's going to require a breakthrough in the earth you see jesus met a woman at the well am i right y'all know the parable it's not a parable it's a story but y'all know the story and, and and the woman come on now she came to draw water in john 4 and 7 and jesus said look Give me a drink. <laughs> and the woman says unto him, <laughs> How is it that you being a Jew ask me, a Samarian, for a drink? For the Jews don't deal with the Samaritans. Jesus said, If thou knewest the gift of God and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he had, would have given thee living water. He said, I'm asking you for something in the natural, but the well that I carry, my goodness, is living water. 
And when you understand transformation and not church, come on now, when you understand that God has filled you with water, when you understand that God has called you to change, li listen, let me tell you right now, God does not want you to be a well full of water, but you're always closed, not available. Your hours are not there. God can't hook up to give somebody else life through you because you have an understanding of church and not of the well God has called you to be. Y'all understand what I'm saying, am I right? If you drive up to a service station in the natural gasoline, you drive up to a service station and all the signs point that the station is open and there's nothing prohibitive to tell you that the pump doesn't have gas, when you pull up and you, come on now, you take the nozzle, you expecting to be able to what? I don't hear people. You're expecting to be able to do what? So God said, if I filled you and I gave you your hours, when I send somebody your way, I expect them to be able to draw, come on, from the living water that I put on the inside of you. But if you haven't checked your well, you're advertised that your hours are open but you're really close. Put your hand together. Y'all looking too deep right now. Y'all looking too deep right now. Tell your neighbor it's not that deep. The woman says unto him, John 4, 11, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. You don't have a bucket to draw. You don't have anything that's going to go down there for us to be able to retrieve and pull out, my goodness, what's on the inside. From whence then has thou living water? Because she still was in the natural. But he was speaking in the spiritual. Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinks of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him. In him, that's you, in her, in him, in her. A well of water springing up into everlasting life. Oh my goodness. When Jesus walked around. He was a well, and when he met that Samaritan lady, the well was at the well. My goodness, the well was at the well. Am I teaching too deep? Because y'all are looking perplexed a little bit. And, and, but 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 the well was at the well, and I, God wants you to know that sometimes He's going to put you, and people going to know that He sent you for them. But if you don't understand that you were sent by God, you'll always refrain waiting on another lesson instead of issuance, come on now, of the living water that God put on the inside of you. Because when you know that God called for you to issue living water, you find yourself in place to issue that water. What if God needed you to give someone water tonight, but you're not available. In other words, your pump station is not there to issue life to them. Well, Y'all looking at me strange now. You see, wells are important. Most of you know the biblical story of uh, Ishmael, Hagar, I don't want to take much time and talk about it. But as Ishmael got older, Ishmael was an antagonist to Isaac. And Abraham didn't like it. Or Sarah really didn't like it. And Abraham did not like it. Genesis 21 verse 9 says, But Sarah saw Ishmael, the son of Abraham, and her Egyptian servant Hagar, making fun of her son Isaac. Oh my goodness. 
Y'all know how y'all mothers can be. So she turned to Abraham and demanded, get rid of that slave woman and her son. He is not going to share the inheritance with my son, Isaac. I won't have it. This upset Abraham very much because Ishmael was his son. But God told Abraham, do not be upset over the boy and your servant. Do whatever Sarah tells you, for Isaac is the son through whom your descendants will be counted. But I will also make a nation of the descendants of Hagar's son, because he is your son too. My goodness. So Abraham got up early the next morning, prepared food in a container of water. Food in a container of water. It's important that you follow that. Food in a container of water and strapped them on Hagar's shoulders. Then he sent her away with their son, and she wandered aimlessly in the wilderness of Beersheba. My goodness, isn't it amazing that one minute you're right there and you're with the head person, and all of a sudden, because of mockery and scorn, you're placed in the wilderness. She's put in the wilderness, and the Bible said, not Billy David now, the Bible said he gave her water. Is that what it says? Oh, y'all not with me tonight. The Bible says he gave her water. Oh, y'all not with me tonight. I got enough people to be with me. Y'all not with me tonight. See, sometimes we can be so closed up that we're no good for when God really want to use us because there's always going to be distractions on the days that we're supposed to be available. He gave her food and a container of water. When the water was gone, Genesis 21 and 15, when the water was gone, she was in the wilderness, a dry and solitary place, a place of no or limited provision. A place where obviously there was no water. <laughs> and it says that she put the boy in the shade of a bush. I'm teaching this for a reason, trust me. Uh, Genesis 21 and 16, then she went and sat down by herself about a hundred yards away. Listen to what she says, I don't want to watch the boy die. And she burst into tears. Here's a mother that was living in the comfort, come on now, of provisions and water. And now she's forced into the wilderness with her son and they run out of water. This stresses the importance of when I look at it, because Ishmael was the son who mocked. And Ishmael was the son who went against Isaac, the promise. But Ishmael still belonged to Abram. And Ishmael still was covered by God. This points to me that there are times that God wants us to be able to look at that person that may not be a church member, my goodness. Uh, they may not go to church. They may not look like you look. They may not talk all that talk that you talk but they still need water. Because the Bible said, bless are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. She was crying. Genesis 21 and 17 is where I begin to find strength. But God, <laughs> that right there is powerful. The mother was crying, but God heard the boy crying. I'll get that in a minute. The mother was doing what mothers do, but the boy was situationally disadvantaged so much so that he'd been signed over to death. And the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven. Hagar, what's wrong? Do not be afraid. God has heard the boy crying as he lies there. Go to him and comfort him. 
for I will make a great nation from his descendants. Then God opened Hagar's eyes, verse 19, and she saw a well full of water. She quickly filled her container, a water container, and gave the boy a drink. And God was with the boy as he grew up in the wilderness. And he became a skillful archer. Just because you're in a dry place doesn't mean that there isn't a well already prepositioned by God. Or that God won't make a well show up in your situation. Many times because of modern day society and our choosing to separate and pick when we come into the presence of God, it's next to impossible for him to use us because of availability. Oh yeah, on Sundays, here am I, send me, I'll go. But when God wants to extract living water from you on Wednesday, come on now, I'm not doing well now. I said, when God wants to extract living water from you on Wednesday, where are you? I ain't no need to, y'all sitting here, why are you feeling guilty? Because you know that you come to church without seeing yourself as a well who's going to supply life for somebody else. The water in you is not for you. Most of the time the anointing that's in you is not for you. It's for somebody else. You're the con container you're the well you're the well that you expected him to put water in but he put his anointing on the inside but you haven't checked your well to know that he put something more valuable in you than just normal drinking water most people can't be what God has called them to be because they're apathetic they've lost interest in God's interest, come on now. The enemy has clogged their wells. And he's clogged their wells, come on now, with distractions. Distractions call money. Mm -hmm. Distractions cause fleshly, called fleshly desires. Distractions that's called habits, come on now. Wells are clogged with selfishness and laziness. Come on, teach Pastor David. Uh, wells are clogged with insensitivity towards God. And most of all, most wells are clogged because people don't know who they are in the Lord. Identity is found. Come on now. Some of you don't have done me in 23. Genealogy proves who we are, who our people are. Am I right? That, that we must understand that if we're going to be like him, I'm not doing well now, y'all Y'all looking at me crazy because you, you're sitting there and you're wondering, and you're looking at yourself, but God wants you to know that wells first and foremost was a sign of wealth and if he called you a well he's saying i'm saying that you're really wealthy my goodness but you have no value if we can't extract from you mm, mm, mm. imagine imagine a thirsty person coming and god is releasing the anointing that he put on in in you ek, out of your belly john 7 38 you know that one that believes on him, as the scripture said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Because Jesus had said, if any man thirsts, come on, let him come unto me and drink. And we are his representation right now. And he's saying we have to be in place. And here's the problem. Who can I teach? Who can I mess with? I'm just about through. Uh, you, you see, when water is limited uh, it moves us over to a time of famine 
And when famine shows up, my goodness, when dearth shows up, come on now, when dryness comes, my goodness, uh, when aridity begins to overtake everything, we look and we see, my goodness, we're looking for a cloud. But he said, some of you are clouds that can't hold water. You can't even be the cloud that he's looking for from above because he's positioned some of you to be a rain cloud, but you're not able to rain. Position some ick out of our belly shall flow rivers of living water. He wants us to be able to, to sustain people as they're coming through. I'm not teaching well tonight. I'm not teaching well tonight. You know why? Uh, because... The Bible has already told you, come on now, we walk by faith and not by sight. So many of you curl up with your Bibles, but you don't open up with your spirit. Understandest thou what thou readest? How can I accept some man should guide me? The righteousness, Lord, of your testimony is everlasting. Give me that understanding so I can live. Come on now. Oh, my goodness. When you understand that there is a well of water, on the inside of you when you understand that you'll also understand that danger is going to be trying to get close to you so that it can clog don't you teach pastor David so that it can clog your well you uh, too many of you you let the wrong people around you in the season when God is trying to pour in it won't go in because you're clogged up through wrong relationship, wrong friendship. I'm not teaching well. Put your hands together right there. I'm going to beat that out of here. You see, when we have wells, somebody say wells. When we have wells, that's when you'll see increase. Why would he send a herd of people to a place that has no water? To a place that has no wells? To a place that they can't drop the bucket and they be refreshed? Somebody said, check your well, check your well. Check, check your neighbor, don't get mad at Pastor David, just check your well. See, wells are necessary to water the flock, to water the herds. Wells are necessary. And anybody that's smart understands. That's why I tell everybody, measure what God gives you and use it wisely. That's why the parable of the ten virgins is in there. You have to measure what you have. Come on now. You can't sustain everything. Just do your part. But you, you have inside of you. You know, we like to say Jesus is a well of water, but he's saying you are a well of water. Springing up, drawing from, drawing from, it's coming forth. It's there, but it won't come through if it's clogged. Don't let depression clog your well. Do not allow rejection to clog your well. Stop clogging your well by your financial disposition. You see, your financial disposition is not going to be answered, come on now, with more labor. In all labor, there is profit, but that's not going to be the answer. God wants us to depend on him. He wants us to sharpen our understanding but to move it to the point that we're able to comprehend with clarity that which we have 
read. Remember, there's something that most people miss with the Word of God. And until you get full understanding of Hebrews 4 and 12, you'll miss the Word of God. But it says that the Word of God is quick. And that word translates to alive. And until you can see it as a living entity, come on now, when you see it as the power that it is, it's alive. The word of God is alive. It's not a concept. It's not an idea. It's not a theory. It is life. It is life. You want to unclog your well? Come on now. When wells are clogged, there are many ways that they unclog them. But one of the ways you can do it is with your praise. Another way that you can unclog your well, come on now, is with your thanksgiving. Another way that you can unclog your well is knowing who God is, that God, I want to personally experience you experientially knowing God my goodness I don't want knowledge of who you are I want to know you intimately to know you better so many wonder why their lives are dry because every time the bucket is dropped it comes up empty Unclog your wells, clear your minds. Stop letting condemnation rule you. Clear your minds. Let the power of God flow through because there's something about water that most people don't pay attention to. This is my last point and I'll be through. Most people don't understand that water under the ground and even on the earth operates with pressure. You think you're under pressure, and the only reason you're under pressure is you haven't allowed the greater pressure, my goodness, to come and push that, which has been clogging your well, to push it out of the way. But when you learn, just like when Minister Wiley was praying earlier, when you learn to say, thank you, Jesus. Come on now. When you learn to just keep saying, thank you, Jesus. And you keep saying, thank you, Jesus. And people wondering why you're thanking Jesus because nothing around you seems to have changed, but they don't understand that. You know you're working, come on now, on putting some pressure on pushing those well blockers out of the way. Those well cloggers, you got to push them out of the way with your praise. You to praise God. Come on now. You want God to publicly appear when you know, come on, that you don't privately praise him. Are y'all hearing me? Tell you, neighbor, water flows all the time. 24 seven. It doesn't just flow at Wednesday night bread for life. Come on now. It doesn't just flow at Sunday service. It doesn't just flow at Sunday at 8.30. Water flows all the time. And the more availability I give to it, the more it'll flow through and flush out. Somebody said flush out. Those things that's not like God. So when things are contrary, come on, to God and his purpose in your life, know that God said, look, I call you to be a well of water that springs up into everlasting life. Somebody say, check your well. Check your well. Say it again, check your well. check your well. Say it one more time, check your well. Check your what are you going to do after checking your well? Give God praise. Give God praise. I'm through. A walk by faith when we walk my goodness by faith we ambulate to assimilate what are you saying pastor david 
Ambulate means to move by walking, my goodness. And assimilate means to become a part of. We become a very a part of the very thing God has called the body, the kingdom to be. We are not a separate entity. We're not, we're not going to be a silo ministry. I told you that. We are kingdom representation. And God, we thank you that the pressure, come on, of the flow of your anointing pushes, come on, everything that's been against us at Chicago Glory Powerhouse, at Goshen Evangelistic Ministry, come on, at Word of Disciple Reconciliation Church, at Restore Church, the power, the pressure of your anointing pushes those things that have been adverse and averse to us. But we give you the glory. We give you the glory, God. We give you the glory, God. God, we give you the glory. In a famished condition, but you didn't let us die. In the wilderness, but you kept us and you sustained us. And for that, we owe you praise, God. We owe you praise right there. God, I thank you. And I bless you right now. Thank you, God, for the well being a place of refreshing for us in this season right now, God. We won't be that well, God, where strife and contention was, God. Oh, God, where envy was, God. But, God, we're going to move into that large place and enjoy your good hand being upon us. Remember the announcement January the 30th. June 30, I'm sorry. Oh, Lord Jesus, they like June 30, Cottondale, Florida, on time, which for us, if it starts at 11, that means 1030, we in place. The address is on this thing, and we'll have it posted again. We trust God for everything he had done for us. Again, we would not have service on June 30th. We will have service on June 23rd. We will have prayer on June 22nd. So don't act like you got confused on what was said. The replay will straighten out any confusion. Is that all right? Give God praise. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you. God bless you. Have a great night.